All your life, God has been preparing you for the year 2020. He had this year in mind, its changes, its demands, whether you're a parent or a community leader or you're just kind of lost in the shuffle. He prepared you for this year. He gave you spiritual gifts for the spiritual work that needed to be done in this year. Think of the man who has had a positive influence on young people in your community for generations, for decades and decades. Spiritual gifts for spiritual work. The woman who writes down names to pray for and uh, morning and evening prays for those people and those names. And then also, as she has the opportunity, um, reaches out to those people, bumps into them, and can actually say with total honesty, I've been praying for you. How are you doing? Spiritual gifts for spiritual work. Think of the, the man or the woman who runs their company with integrity and uh, the best interests of their customers and their employees in mind. Um, they don't only make decisions for number one or for a few you know, shareholders, um, but for everybody. And through their products and services, they show a glimpse of God's nature. Um, to the people that they interact with in their industry and beyond. Spiritual gifts for spiritual work. Don't let me forget to mention that all these people, all of you, um, do everything you do as a child of God. Seven days a week. Every kind of work you do is as a child of God. You fill out your time cards as a child of God. You compose emails and speak in meetings as a child of God. You plan out projects and collaborate with your teams as a child of God. You make nail-biting decisions um, as a child of God. As a loved and forgiven child of God, by the way, making decisions is tough. You mentor and encourage and pray and build and fix and repair as a child of God. You are gifted with spiritual gifts for spiritual work. This is what God's Spirit teaches us in 1 Corinthians 12, 1 to 13. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers, I do, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans... You were deceived and somehow led away to mute idols. Those are uh, idols, false gods that cannot speak, okay? Unlike our God who speaks very clearly. Therefore, I'm informing you that no one speaking by God's Spirit says, a curse be upon Jesus, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are various kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different kinds of ministries, but the same Lord. There are various kinds of activity, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. Each person is given a manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one person, a message of wisdom is given by the Spirit. To another, a message of knowledge as the same Spirit provides it. By the same Spirit, faith is given to someone else, and to another, the same Spirit gives healing gifts. Another is given power to do miracles. Another, the gift of prophecy. Another, the evaluating of spirits. Someone else, different kinds of tongues. And another, the interpretation of tongues. One and the same Spirit produces all of these distributing them to each one individually as he desires. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit we all were baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free people, 
and we were all caused to drink one spirit. What we're going to do with this today is we're going to bust three myths about spiritual gifts and spiritual work. And as we bust those myths, you're going to begin to see the spiritual gifts and spiritual work God has prepared for you. So myth number one, I have to do something for the church for it to be spiritual work. I have to do something for the church, and then it's spiritual work. No, member, no wonder so many people uh, are so guilty all the time that, oh, you know, just haven't had time for my church lately. And uh, I hear that so often, this kind of sheep and sheepishness about, well, you know, I haven't really been around doing much, I haven't even been in worship much. But uh, I wish I could help, help out more. I wish people could hear what uh, the teaching says here. Verse 7, each person is given a manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. How would it help the common good if all the Christians in a town got together and locked themselves into a building um, whenever they weren't at work, and they kept themselves so busy with church things that uh, they missed the majority of bedtimes, evening talks, and dates with their spouse, and the chance to talk over their fence with their neighbor and help them out. Or substitute any organization in here besides, you know, the, the, the uh, organization of the church. And any organization, any cause... Any project that we sell ourselves to, um, it can be our work that we marry ourselves to. It can be the pursuit of a dream. Um, some cause, some dream, some work that uh, we think it's going to fulfill us. We think it's going to make us happy and fulfilled and complete. And yet, uh, if that's what we're looking to an organization for you're going to find yourself disappointed uh, quite a bit of the time because all those organizations I mentioned, um, no matter how great they are, how, you know, how the people are in them, uh, they are still filled with sin-scarred people like you who are going to make a mess of things at times. And then when things don't go well with that organization that you have uh, really put all of your... Uh, investment into of time energy everything we're so let down we're irate and we're depressed that that organization couldn't do for us uh, what we thought it should do could these be the mute idols that the teaching says we used to worship before we deeply knew jesus as lord before we wholeheartedly confessed Jesus as Lord. The point of church is not to play church. <laughs> the point of church is to know Jesus as Lord. To know that we have spiritual gifts and spiritual work to do in every area of our lives, not only when we're involved directly with our church's ministry. Now think of how it could help the common good if Christians in the town gathered for worship in the regular rhythms of life, even during a pandemic in new and creative ways. And they came together for the purpose of being reminded of the Lord they all serve, the Lord who has served all of them equally, being reminded of the gifts they all have from this Lord, being challenged on where they're not using their gifts, um, where they're being lazy, or where they're misusing their gifts, maybe for personal gain, uh, or they're trying to be someone they're not. Um, they have these gifts, but they're trying to do other things that they're really not built for. And they can learn all that in a worship service, in a time of teaching and Bible study. They come together to, to be forgiven for the misuse of their gifts, um, because the most gifted one gifted his life 
on the cross for them. And they come together to inspire each other to get back out there in the trenches and gift themselves to others with what God has uniquely designed them to be and to do. So, myth number one, I have to do something for the church for it to be spiritual work. No, God intends you to use your spiritual gifts for spiritual work seven days a week. So now myth number two, spiritual work always means I mention Jesus every time I serve someone. I mention Jesus every time I serve someone. Well, we're definitely taught here, no one speaking by God's Spirit says a curse be upon Jesus, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. So spiritual people do speak spiritual words, words about God. They call on the name of their Lord. They use the name of their Lord privately and publicly when appropriate. But does this mean that the Christian baker or artist or plumber needs to put a Bible passage on every cake or to put a cross somewhere in every painting or for the plumber, every time they go and uh, somebody's sewage backs up, they initiate a Jesus conversation with the homeowner. Well, no. Why not? The teaching says that there are various kinds of gifts, but the same spirit. There are different kinds of ministries, and yet the same Lord. There are various kinds of activity, but the same God who produces all of them and everyone. Each person is given a manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. I purposely picked three occupations, three skill sets that I'm terrible at. Baking? No. No way. Yuck, you'll spit it out. Artist, stick people. Have my son draw you something. Plumber, call a plumber. Go on YouTube for yourself. I will be of no help to you. These are gifts and activities and work that other, other people can do so much better than me. Um, so what makes it different when a Christian baker, artist, or plumber does it? from a non-Christian baker, artist, or plumber. That's, that's what we want to talk about. Let, let's start with this. Each of you has different gifts from the same Spirit. Different ministries. Ministries are, is, a ministry is any way that you serve other people. And as a Christian, you're always serving others as a representative of Christ. You're wearing, you know, the team uniform in whatever work you're doing. Uh, different ministries, but the same Lord who sends you on your daily missions here and there. Various kinds of activities, the same God who oversees all these activities under the sun. God has given his spirit to blue and white collar workers. God has given each of you a way uh, to give others a glimpse of his spirit. The work you do every day can give people a glimpse of his spirit. So the teaching goes on to list specific spiritual gifts. Some have wisdom, the ability to use bits of knowledge in difficult situations and apply that knowledge in a hard situation. Others have knowledge and the ability to share it in a humble conversational, educational kind of way that people are actually going to listen to you. Others have faith, the um, desire to pray about everything and everyone, to encourage the brokenhearted or the person who needs an extra boost, the ability to keep a Christ-trusting attitude in any situation. Some of you have the gifts to heal others physically, or emotionally. I prayed for the doctors and the nurses and the medical staff today as a few of them reached out to me this week saying how overloaded and overwhelmed their facilities and their work is right now in certain, in certain areas, especially our community. Uh, some of you have the power to, to heal relationships, to restore broken relationships, uh, to inner, you know, 
to mediate for others and peacemake. Some have the power to do what others thought was impossible, and you may be even surprised yourself. Uh, others have the gift to look into the future and to pave a way ahead where there didn't seem to be one and to see what's coming up ahead when everybody else sees murkiness. Others have the gift to uh, distinguish between true and false, uh, between godly and demonic. Others know how to relate to just about anyone, and they meet them where they're at, and they speak their lingo. One and the same Spirit produces all of these, distributing them to each one individually as he desires. So back to the Christian artist, baker, and plumber. The Christian artist might make a hundred paintings and might not include a cross on one of them. Yet their paintings help people see the beauty of God's creation. Or their paintings represent the pain in the world that we can't fix. We can't fix it all. And the, these, this painting might uh, cause such a stir in someone that they begin to search for the God that... that they've been looking for, that God who can meet them in their pain and be there where, where no human can fix that or change that the, and show them a whole better world to come. The artist is helping people see the beauty of God at times or the heart of God at other times, even without putting crosses all over their work. And as they do those hundred paintings, of course, they talk off to the side with with peers and other artists and people perusing their art at shows. And yes, the name of Jesus might come up. But have you considered they also might be preparing a heart and a mind for someone else? Someone else who has the gift of explicitly, um, clearly articulating who Jesus is and because the, the art prepared the heart and the mind for that conversation that that artist may or may not have, but God will bring along the person with the gifts to be able to explain our God more clearly. Same with the baker. Um, same with the plumber. The way they do their job. The way they treat their customers, coworkers, and industry peers um, brings God's spirit into the world, leading people to think differently about their lives and uh, what is beyond this life. And God may gift the artist, the baker, the plumber with the ability to articulate these truths about Jesus, or he may gift someone else that will come along after that person has done their work to have a more direct conversation. So, a spiritual work always means I mention Jesus' name every time I serve someone, not so. Spiritual work, it's, it's about the way you do the work. Um, and, and by the way you do the work, people are going to begin to pay attention to who's behind you, all right? Whose team uniform you're wearing. So finally, myth number three, spiritual work is for pastors and uh, teachers, you know, pe people who teach in Christian schools, Christian colleges, um, people who, you know, wear the uniform of public ministry. Is that so? I hope we're getting past this one. Uh, we've been doing a lot of work here to get past this one, even before, even before I got here. I think you're well aware that uh, anytime I bring a message to you, um, whether in person or online. There's a gifted army working with me. Um, today's thing is pretty simple, but I still had a team here with me to even get this set up. The technology team that uh, threw together an emergency plan for this Sunday is installing new equipment this uh, next week, and we think it'll be ready by Thanksgiving to bring you better experience online long into the future and even putting this into a podcast form as well. The musicians who will contribute in a few weeks, uh, we're meeting later this morning, the composers who write the music that we play, the uh, people who write the prayers that we speak, those beautiful prayers, 
the people who manufacture the furniture that you're sitting on to worship this morning, the people who put together slides, the leaders who make the hard decisions to keep us physically safe and spiritually sound all at the same time, considering the interests of all of us and uh, all the people in our communities, which can be very difficult spiritual work, very difficult decisions. All work can be spiritual. All work. Dedicate your work to God. Dedicate your household chores to God, the mundane, repetitive tasks of life, the work you punch the clock for, the work you choose to do in your spare time, the work of listening, the work of answering carefully. Ask God to use whatever gifts you've been given, whatever work you do to point people to the work of Jesus Christ. And if you're at step one, God, what are my spiritual gifts? Even before I know the work I'm going to do, I need to know the gifts I have. There's this easy assessment that I'll attach to this message. We've taken 40 people through it this fall in a much more extensive way, but I'll tell you what, you fill out that assessment, get your results, you can read about them on there. I welcome you to meet with me over Zoom or the phone right now, or eventually, you know, in person. And uh, we can talk through your spiritual gifts and the place you are in life right now. I'd be glad to have that half hour to one hour conversation with you to get things started based on that spiritual gifts assessment. So what spiritual gifts has God distributed to you? What work has he given you the gifts for? Where there are gifts given, there is work to do. Where there are spiritual gifts, there is spiritual work to do that has eternal, larger-than-life impact. And what a year, what a year to, to be doing that. What a year to be finding our spiritual gifts, using them, and doing spiritual work together. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen.